I'm on the job hunt, so I've been looking over my resume, and it's making me think about all of the jobs I've had in the past. Mostly in the dreaded customer service. Anyone who works with the public knows that the public is crazy. So here are my top five weirdest customer service interactions. Number one. My second job ever worked in a blockbuster video right after high school. One day, this woman came in and wanted to return this tape and get a refund. Yes, I said tape. I'm old. Uh, did you say old? Quiet, you. Anyway, this woman said she wanted a refund for the tape. I asked her, you know, what's wrong with it? She said, it's the wrong movie. Oh, is it the wrong tape in the box? No, it says it's the movie Random Hearts, but when I watched it, I don't think there were the right people in the movie. I was obviously confused by this and said, was it that you thought an actor was in the movie and it turns out they weren't? She said, no, no, it's not that. It looked like Harrison Ford in the movie, but she kind of leaned in conspiratorially. I don't think it's actually Harrison Ford. She then confided in me that she had heard that sometimes people will reshoot popular movies and make fake versions of them and then sell them. I have heard this as well. However, I don't know if it's 100% true, and even if it is, those are not the copies of the movie you'd be renting in a blockbuster video. This woman was 100% convinced that someone had shot the entire movie Random Hearts with lookalikes, possibly aliens. When I told her I was really sorry, but there was no way for me to give her a refund, she sighed and said, well, I still think that someone should tell Harrison Ford about this. Do you have his address? Number two, I was working just a couple of years ago at a call center doing customer service for online pharmacies. This woman had been ordering for us for a while under the name Russell Jones. Now she claimed the name was pronounced Rucille. We were trying very hard to prove she was ordering it for somebody else, which is illegal, but we couldn't. So one day she called to place her order. As I pulled up her account, I noticed she had recently changed the email address on file to Russell Jones Jr. at whatever.com. Finally, I had her. I said, ma'am, you just need to tell Russell he needs to order his medication himself from now on. She went, no, 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 it's me. I, I'm Rus Russell. I'm Russell. It's my name. And I said, ma'am, your email address is Russell Jones Jr. And she said, well, that's my, my son's email address. Ma'am, you mean to tell me your name is spelled like Russell. You married a man named Russell. And when you had a child, you named him Russell as well? Number three, also from that same call center, a woman was having me place an order for her. One of the questions is, when's the last time you saw your primary care physician? And she said, well, just saw him or saw him for medical reasons? I said, well, you know, medical reasons, a checkup or something like that. I don't just mean if you ran into him at the grocery store. And she said, well, my doctor is also my pastor and I've been ill lately and we recently had a prayer meeting about it. Does that count? <sighs> Number four. I was working at a fabric store and it was about Halloween time. We'd frequently get people trying to make Halloween costumes that weren't quite equipped to put together themselves. One day I was working at the cutting counter. This woman came up with a cart overflowing with fabric and lace and trim. She had thread, she had buttons and zippers. She had bought everything she needed to go with this very complicated renaissance style pattern that she was planning to buy. I looked at how complicated it was and asked as gently as I could, ma'am, have you ever sewn something like this before? She said, well, no, not really. From the tone of her voice, I guess probably the last time she sewed anything was in a high school home ec class. Even with an infinite amount of time, someone who doesn't know how to sew probably wouldn't be able to make a satisfactory version of that dress. But I wanted to let her down easy. So I said, it's a kind of complicated pattern. If you're not used to this kind of thing, it'll probably take you a while. When's the party that you want to wear this to? Figuring she'd say, oh, in a week or two. And I would say, that's not enough time. And then hopefully she would understand. Her response? Oh, it's tonight at eight. What? Number five. I worked at a local record store for about four years. And I definitely had some weird run-ins there. But possibly the weirdest and most infuriating was when a gentleman came into our store one day. It was pretty slow. And he spent probably an hour browsing. He wasn't in any hurry. Eventually he picked a CD, brought it up to the front. I rang him up, he paid for it, and he left. 10 or 15 minutes passed and he came back in. He put the CD, which had been unwrapped, on the counter in front of me. 
and push it towards me and said, I'd like to undo this transaction. I asked, is there something wrong with the CD? Is it scratched? Is it broken? Wrong disc inside the box? Throw me a bone. His response was, well, since the album was $20, which is kind of expensive, I assumed that it would have lyrics in the booklet. But there are no lyrics in the booklet, so I don't want it. I tried to explain to him that CDs vary in price for a number of reasons. Unfortunately, whether or not there are lyrics in the booklet is not one of these factors. I explained this to him, and he responded with utter disbelief. I further went on to tell him, in the future, if it really mattered to him whether or not a CD had lyrics in the booklet, all he had to do was ask one of us, and we could look it up online. We wouldn't necessarily 100% be able to find that answer, but we could try. He was infuriated. Swore he'd never come to the store again, said he'd tell all his friends to never shop there, and stormed off. This story, to me, says everything about the level of entitlement that people carry with them into retail and customer service situations. They make a mistake regardless of whether it's their fault. They want you to just undo it. Nobody wants to take responsibility for their own actions. Actually, that kind of says a lot about the world in general, doesn't it? <sighs>